good to go. All right, Mr. Mr. Uh, incoming President George Royal, looks like I think we're ready to go here. I think everybody who's going to join us has joined us. I'll keep an eye on the um, on the waiting room, Jeff. If you'll do the same thing, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, and I want to apologize up front. I my neighbor next door is uh, doing an addition, so there's some construction going on. If there's some loud banging, I may have to mute while other people are on. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to welcome everybody to this orientation meeting. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, being able to serve on this board under uh, Shalita and Joe Challen and now Craig. They've basically set a very high bar. Um, and so it's going to be tough to live up to the high bar that they've, they've set. Um, and also, I'm just uh, very excited also about the future board. Um, and Jeff Chernoff's group when he becomes president. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, thank you all for, uh, for being here today. And I wanna start off with uh, a big congratulations and thanks to Tom Cothran. Uh, some of you probably know, or those that you may not know, but Tom has, uh, has, has been nominated as secretary uh, of NAFA. And so uh, let's give him an applause for that. So we've got our own Brian Holtz is already in that position. So. Uh, in the next two, three years, we'll have uh, two presidents of NAFA come from, from Florida. So that's pretty, that's pretty incredible, pretty awesome. So congratulations, Tom. Thank you. Way to go. Um, I heard there were some, some stiff competition, and you, and you, you made it. So uh, yeah. kudos. So congratulate Tom on that. So uh, I guess the first order of business, uh, Tom, is to go ahead and introduce the board. Um, I think most of you already know who you are, so to speak, but um, next year, the president-elect will be our own Jeff Chernoff, um, and the vice president will be Maureen. I see Maureen's on the call. I don't see her smiling I'm face. I see, I'm I see. I know she's there. <laughs> um, Secretary Treasurer, we're so pleased again that Tiffany agreed to do that um, after much tooth pulling, and appreciate the people that also convinced her to do that. Um, and of course, Craig will be the immediate past president. And hopefully, because he's the immediate past president, he'll help us serving on the governance committee, which I appreciate you doing that, Craig. Thanks again. I didn't ask him, but thank you for doing it. <laughs> I kind of figured that was coming. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and of course, our national committee person, Tom, will be moving up. So uh, we'll have to, uh, as a board, decide uh, what we're going to do about the national committee person. Um, there's been some names that we, Tom and I have talked about, but we will get to that at a later date and time. I'm so pleased that uh, Taylor is going to remain on uh, as the PC, as the PIC, PC committee chair. Taylor's done an outstanding job, as you know. Other uh, states are now trying to duplicate some of the things that she's put in place. And, and Glenn Ritchie, I'm so pleased that Glenn Ritchie is going to be the, the, the PIC chair. Um, obviously, Glenn's down here in Central Florida. There couldn't be a better person for that job than him. Um, Tim Holliday is gonna be, remain as the legislative chair. Uh, again, can't, couldn't be a better choice than, than uh, Tom, Tim Holliday on that. Scott Spicer, our new membership chair. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Thank you so much for agreeing to do that. And um, Scott's gonna have a lot of help with that next year. And obviously that's gonna be one of our big goals as it has been for the last several years to increase the membership of this organization and throughout NAFA. And we don't think we could have a better person in that role than Scott. Patrick Garibrandt, new to the board. Pat, I've gotten to know Pat a little bit over the next last couple of years. Uh, despite he's a big IU Hoosier, that's okay. Uh, he's down here in Tampa doing a whale of a job, especially as president of that chapter last year. And we're so pleased to have Pat, Pat come aboard as the YAT chair. Uh, Craig Roderick is going to continue it's his role as the health chairman. Don't think there's ever been a better health chairman than Craig especially during this tumultuous times that we're going through right now. Nobody knows this industry better than Craig does. Um, and uh, Robert Rosenthal is going to continue on as a director at large, as well as David Tapia. I'm glad David's on the call today. I think I saw David on there. Thank you again for that. Um, and then, you know, Tom, do you want me to go ahead and just get the committees, knock them out while we're doing this? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Absolutely. Yeah, we talked about the governance committee. Um, so pleased that Kelly Keith is going to remain on as the Lily chair. She's going to have help, and uh, uh, John Grant is going to co-chair that with her, I believe. Um, 
the legislative chair we already talked about with Tim, and he's got to confirm uh, his group, but pretty sure that that Tom Cothran and Sheila and Craig and David Russell, uh, Glenn Ritchie, Jim Tollerton, and Kurt will remain on. If not, we'll get those guys replaced. Um, the local funds task force is really headed up by Tiffany, but uh, as Tom kind of educated me on that, Craig and, and uh, Maureen are also on that committee. It's really not a committee that is highly utilized, so there's really not a whole lot for them to do, and hopefully there won't be a need for them to get involved in any uh, distributing of funds next year, but if they do, we've got that set up. <clears throat> there's a new business development task force that's headed up by Jeff Chernoff, um, and we're really pleased that also uh, Taylor and Darian are on that that uh, committee with, with Jeff. And because of that, we kind of going to combine that with the marketing task force committee. Don't see really a need to do both of those. Um, and then uh, Linda Moore is still the chair of the foundation board. Uh, Tom Cochran, I mean, Tom, uh, Ashley and I talked about wanting to do some things with the foundation next year under my organization. And so we're going to try to take that to the next level next year as well. And we have, a new, we have a new task force that will become a committee. It's called the DEI task force. The DEI task force stands for Diverse, Diversity, Ed, Equity and Inclusion Program. Um, it's an effort by NAFA to ex, uh, expand our, our diversity program, especially in membership. Um, but Jeff Chernoff is at, uh, has agreed to kind of spearhead this committee, this task force, take it to the next level. Um, I don't think there's a better person to do that than Jeff. Um, you know, Jeff was asking, what, what am I going to do next year as president-elect? And he's already done so much, but we didn't want him to put everything on his plate. But I think there's not a better person for this than, than Jeff Chernoff. Um, Tom, I don't think I've missed any of the committees that you and I discussed. If I have, uh, let me know. I know that uh, also on the foundation committee, Denwood Parish, uh, Joe Chalam and Paula Keyes are going to be helping out on that committee as well. No, so, I think you about got them. It's good. All right. Um, once again, can't thank you people enough that are uh, serving on this board and this committee. And uh, just thanks so much for, for your uh, inclusion. So uh, <clears throat> I guess that would also, uh, we got two hours blocked out for this. I don't think we're going to need two hours, folks. I can't fathom it going that long unless we get somebody to get on their high horse about something. I don't know what that would be on a Monday. Um, but uh, um, goals and visions for 2022. When I sat down to look at this uh, and maybe make a few notes, jot down a few things to say, I quickly realized that um, I could talk a long time about this. And uh, I don't think you need to hear me talk a long time about this. So um, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, I'm a history buff a little bit, was a history major in, in college. And about 101 years ago, in, in, in uh, 1920, a uh, guy ran for president named Warren G. Hardy. And uh, we were just coming off World War I um, and the Spanish flu pandemic that happened in, in 18 and 19, where, you know, hundreds of thousands of people died with that pandemic. And his slogan was, return to normalcy. So if I could say anything about goals and for 2022, I think my motto or, or slogan is gonna be, uh, let's return to normalcy. I know that we are all social creatures. I can't wait to get together in person again for board meetings, for state conventions, for the national convention, you know, for congressional convention, the day on the hill. One of the things that, that, that led me to enjoy being part of NAFA was the people that, that I've met before that I've mentioned and being able to be with them, not only in a professional setting, but in social settings as well. Um, and I consider most of you friends that I will have for a long, long time. Um, but uh, they're one of the speakers that I was able to get acquainted with and listen to and still have his material and listen whenever I can, sometimes in the car, was Dr. Randy Marshall, uh, PhD. I don't know if any of you have ever heard Dr. Marshall speak. Um, we had him down here at Central Florida a couple of years ago, um, one of his last speaking engagements. And um, Dr. Marshall talked about goals versus desires. And that really kind of hit home to me. 
Um, I had kind of heard this years ago in another arena, um, but basically what Dr. Marshall's speech is about, the key to mental health is knowing the difference between goals and desires. And what he defines goals as is that which you alone can accomplish and you can control. You have to do it. You have to work at it. Your activity and your behavior can accomplish it. It's predictable, it's scheduled, and it can be measured, okay? So desires are that which is out of your control and depends on someone else to help you accomplish it. Your activity and behavior alone cannot accomplish it. It is unpredictable, it's unscheduled, and it cannot be dependent upon results. An example for that is, is that someone in sales that says, you know, my goal is to make X amount of dollars next year. Well, that's a goal that really uh, is, is, is kind of beyond your control. There's a lot of things that could happen in your life over the next year that could uh, prohibit you from making the kind of money that you think you want to make. So I've always believed that goals are what you can measure. Okay, so if you want to lose weight, you can say, I want to lose weight. And that's my goal. Everybody wants to lose weight. That's a goal that a lot of us have. But you have to set a goal of how to go about accomplishing to lose weight. So work for goals, pray for desires. If you live your life to become dependent on results, you'll go crazy. So you'll, if you have desires that don't get met, that are beyond your control. So th this is what I, I thought about when, when setting up these goals, about grow your membership with expanded committee and tools. You know, so grow your membership is a desire. Uh, a goal is to accomplish it with expanded committees and tools and try to track those so that we can increase our membership that way. Something that can be, uh, you know, it's like the, 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 in football, the eye in the sky will not lie, you know? So the second goal I had was create diversity, equity and inclusion, DEI task force, which we've already talked about, which uh, Jeff Chernoff is gonna be uh, uh, running that, that committee, which will be a, or task force, which will be a committee. I wanna better communicate our advocacy mission. Um, you know, I want to nail it down and find out exactly what is going to be our focus next year instead of, you know, getting all over the place and getting behind a bunch of pieces of legislation that uh, a lot of us are not aware of. I think when we put our efforts behind one major goal, uh, it makes what we do a lot more important. Um, and then promote the new NAFA resources uh, to our members. You know, there's just so many resources that we have now. I think NAFA has done a great job in expanding those welcoming new members aboard. And I know I asked a question at our last board meeting down here in Central Florida uh, about how many of you have been on the website? How many of you know about uh, the tools and resources available to you? So those are pretty much my goals uh, as we take on the next year. Um, you know, I was looking at some, some numbers the other day. There's 1.5 million not-for-profits in the United States. There's 7,200 chambers of commerce, there's 155,000 associations, and yet NAFA is one of the oldest of those associations. It's 130 years old, you know, you, and when, we, when you do a demographic survey of why people are leaving associations, it's the same thing that we've heard. What have you done for me lately? So I think it's important that even though we're the third largest NAFA or association with just over 1,400 members, there's 40,000 national members of NAFA. I think that we need to figure out and answer that question uh, as what have you done for me lately? Um, <clears throat> so my plan is to keep this organization strong by getting back to normalcy, getting back to doing the things that we did when I first got involved with NAFA, when all of you were involved in NAFA and had fun meeting people, going out there meeting and greeting each other and you know, moving forward with our advocacy programs to protect our business, protect our industry, and do what's right for our clients. Um, you know, I'm gonna, you're probably gonna hear from me a lot of analogies about sports. Sports have played a major role in my life, my family, my father, my kids. Um, we are all sports people. I was a coach and a head coach. And I do think there's a lot of analogies in running an organization with that. You know, all successful teams. They all not only have a strong head coach, but they have great assistant coaches, all right? Um, or like Saban would say, all right? Uh, 
you know, but it takes, it takes a strong assistant coach. And so what I believe the head coach's job is to do is to coach the coaches, you know, the CEO type mentality, you know, Bobby Bowden his great years at Florida state was not out there coaching the players. He was coaching his coaches. It was his offensive coordinator that ran the offense. It was a defensive coordinator that ran the defense. Um, you know, I, I looked at this weekend, I was watching the Alabama Ole Miss game. And uh, a lot of you know that Lane Kiffin used to coach for Nick Saban. You know, he's been around the river a few times. He was at USC, he was the head coach of Tennessee. Um, he's an offensive mind, uh, pretty doggone good coach. But some of you may remember his last year at Alabama when there was a tirade on the sideline when Saban just chewed him up one side and down the other. And of course, the national TV cameras caught it. And uh, they interviewed after the game, one of the reporters asked, they asked Nick Saban, they said, coach, um, what, what was that discussion you had on the sideline with Lane Kiffin? And Saban responded, that wasn't a discussion, that was an ass chewing. So, you know, you have to know the difference between a discussion and an ass chewing. And not that I'm gonna chew anybody's asses, but sometimes the head coach has got to get his assistants in line so that they can coach and do the day-to-day -day work necessary for the team. Good morning in Congress. I'm sorry. That was some background. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, um, I, I do make a lot of sports analogies. I hope you don't get tired of them. Um, and last but not least, I'll make another analogy. Uh, in 1929, Calvin Coolidge became president of the United States, or excuse me, 1929, Calvin Coolidge left the office of president of the United States. He got defeated by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We had the, uh, the Great Depression was upon us. Um, you know, he, he said that the Great Depression was like a runaway freight train, that the, that the economy was like a runaway freight train. And he felt like he was the conductor of the train. And there wasn't a doggone thing he could do about it to stop what was going to fix to happen. And of course, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal got credit for getting us out of the depression in 1932 when he was elected. But when Calvin Coolidge went out of office, he, he did a poem at the inauguration and he, he related himself to the conductor of that train. And what he said was, it's not my place to run the train, the whistle I cannot blow. It's not my place to say how far the train's supposed to go. It's not my place to shoot off steam nor even clang the bell but let that train just jump the track, then see who catches hell. And that's kind of the way you feel when you're a head coach. That's kind of the way you feel when you're head of an organization, CEO, president, top dog. When something goes wrong, it starts at the top and works its way down. So uh, I just want to keep this train on the right tracks, moving forward, getting up ahead of steam, and getting back to where we used to, to be when we could return to normalcy. And last but not least, um, I saw something years ago that hit me really hard. The Carnegie Institute of Technology talked about success in business. And the Carnegie Institute came up with this deal that said 85% of your financial success is due to personality and the ability to communicate, negotiate, and lead. Shockingly, only 15% is due to technical knowledge. I've already told Tom, Tom, I'm not the technical guy. OK, I'm going to rely on Tiffany to put those numbers together and make sure that everything's OK. Um, but I'm going to be the head coach. I'm going to try to be the CEO in charge. I want to coach the coaches and uh, love all you guys. Appreciate all your work and everything you're going to do to help us move forward. And again, can't say how much that I'm so you know impressed with what Craig has done this past year, especially during this pandemic and Joe before him. And I just only hope that I can keep that train moving. So enough of that, let's move on. Tom, what's next on the agenda? Well, just a reminder that uh, during 2022 that um, our, um, our board of directors meetings will be held monthly as they have been for some time now. Uh, and uh, George has uh, decided we wanna keep the same schedule. We'll meet the last Wednesday of each month um, at, uh, nine o'clock a.m. and I'll send you the appropriate notices and uh, you'll, you'll not forget those. And then um, we'll have the executive committee meetings. <clears throat> I'm sorry, 
the board of directors yeah. meet the first Wednesday. The executive committee meets the last Wednesday. Let me get that straight. I got ahead of myself here. Right. But um, yeah, the last Wednesday at four o'clock p.m. is with the executive committee. Then the board of directors meets the first Wednesday morning at nine o'clock a.m. And uh, if you'll mark those on your calendar, we've got those on the calendar that we have available for you in the notebooks, the leadership notebooks, and you can plug those in as well. Um, we will have um, an in-person board of directors meeting at our Day on the Hill in 2022. That's this coming January 31st on Monday morning of that, uh, uh, of that event, Day on the Hill. We'll have a three-hour board meeting from 9 a.m. to noon. It'll be located in Tim Meenan's conference room here in Tallahassee, and we'll get all that information to you as well. We'll also plan to have a board of directors meeting at our uh, sales symposium in July, the financial advisor sales symposium, uh, July 13th. That's a Wednesday. And I don't have an exact time for you yet. It'll probably be in the afternoon. It'll probably be a noon or one o'clock start for that meeting, but uh, we'll get that uh, detail to you as, as we come to it. Yeah. And then also, um, you know, just a couple of other dates to mention that the, uh, the day on the Hill will be in January the 31st and, and February 1st. Uh, look for everybody to be in Tallahassee. And then once again, seeing everybody in person again will be a great joy. Um, sales Symposium will be in July. July 13th uh, is the date set aside for that. And uh, in closing, before Tom starts the actual orientation, I just want to just say to all of you that um, welcome any of your thoughts, comments, criticisms, anything that you have to talk to me. You all know how to get in touch with me, my email, uh, my cell phone. Um, certainly, um, I didn't invent the wheel and I'm always looking to build a better mousetrap and always open to comments and suggestions from all of you. So appreciate that very much. And if anybody has any questions, um, we will maybe have a little roundtable discussion a little later on, but uh, comments, questions, anybody? Before you kick it off, I'd like to just say a brief word. Absolutely. So um, I just want to tell everyone on the call how honored I've always been to work from Florida. Uh, Florida has always kind of um, stood in a spot that at times uh, NAFA didn't enjoy. Um, we always seem to ask the tough questions. And, and um, I remember a president years ago, Tom, uh, we were, I won't go through details, but we were told that uh, that we'd never have a president from Florida. So uh, Tiffany, your dad's been involved in some of that. And he, um, after Danny tragically got killed, he, your, uh, Tim ran my second trustee campaign. And, you know, this whole thing for secretary came out of nowhere. It was, I thought the window was closed. Um, you know, I'd been asked a couple of times over the years that since they changed the way they do it. And um, this time I was in a position or am in a position where I can do it. It was the first time I've been asked where I could say yes. And uh, but it did come out of nowhere. It was not on my radar. I had no idea uh, when I accepted a national committee person's role in Florida. Uh, I had no idea that um, that uh, I called a gaggle of presidents was going to get together and approached me about submitting my name. So I'm humbled and honored that uh, I've been picked, especially after being off the, out of the so-called loop uh, for what, six years now. And uh, there will be people on that board that I don't even know. So um, it's odd, but I'm honored to still be considered a person that would be in that role. And um, I'll give it all I've got and represent Florida well, as I'm sure you uh, would expect. And we've got many challenges ahead of us. Uh, Florida does lead the way. And uh, I'm, I'm honored to be from Florida. But NAFA Florida today, Tom Ashley, you know that we are not viewed like we were years ago. We're, we're, we're viewed with respect uh, as one of the lead, um, no term, you like, you're talking about saying is the lead hog at the trough. So um, we we do have, we pack some weight. Uh, we're doing a good job. We're doing things right. And, um, you know, I'm just honored to have served with y'all and uh, we'll try to make you proud. Just wanted to share that.
Awesome, Tom. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I'm gonna since I'm not gonna be on the board, I'm gonna sign off. And Tom, thanks for all you do. Uh, I won't be a stranger. I'm around anytime, and uh, it's, it's uh, let, me, still... let me let me just say, I you know, this is an awesome time for you. It's an awesome time for the association. Um, I've known you for many, many years. Um, you and I go way, way back, almost to the time when I came on board as, as an insurance agent with Northwestern Mutual as a brand new staff member. And um, you were one of the first people I got to know and involved, especially when I came on staff, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1994. But I, I can think of no one who would be a better selection by the NAFA Governance Committee to serve as secretary. I know that you are extremely well thought of on the national level as you are here in Florida. Um, and I think how that's evidenced is the fact that you were selected to run for secretary immediately behind Brian Holtz. Now that puts two people from Florida running uh, one behind the other. NAFA doesn't usually work that way. If you know anything about the governance and how, how they work, they like to spread it around different states and spread the love, if you will. And this is a, a very much a, um, a departure from how they normally do things. And if you just read into that one piece of information alone, I think it speaks volumes as to how they feel about you up there, Tom. So congratulations. It's been a long time coming. I know it's been discussed for years. I'm just glad now's the time. So good luck with it. I appreciate it. It did, it did uh, catch me off guard, but I'm honored and humbled and, and Every day goes by, I get more and more excited and stoked about the, the opportunity. It's That's still great. kind of I, I want to reiterate right Tom, now. that, I, that I, I agree with everything Tom just said. Uh, you're the guy that recruited me onto the state committee. Yeah. Back in 2008, a long time back. But uh, it's always been a pleasure working with you, and I can't think of anybody finer to, uh, to lead this organization. And hopefully, I'm going to tell you, I told the person that kind of uh, gave me that little uh, off-the-record phone call uh, I told him, I, I, I hope I can thank you three years from now. So, Craig, I hope you can thank me all these years later. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor to serve with y'all, and I'll continue to serve with you. I'm never going to be any different than who I am right now. So, I'm always around and always available. Good. Well, we're looking forward to hearing from you, too. Thank you. all All right, guys. See you later. Um, all right, very good. Thank you, folks. Let me just also say that uh, I'm really excited about working with this board next year. Um, uh, George Royal has uh, just done an amazing job getting ready for this meeting. As you can tell, he's very prepared. Uh, but George is no stranger to leadership. He was served as uh, president of our large Central Florida chapter. And um, I know that uh, being in the room periodically during some of those board meetings and uh, um, hearing about what he's doing uh, or was doing as president for NAFA Central Florida. I think we're in for a treat this year as he comes on board to lead this association. So George, I'm looking forward to you. The staff is looking forward to working with you. And I know that this uh, board of directors is looking forward to working with you as well. Um, just a couple of things before I get started with, with my area here. Number one, as you, can, as you can see on your screen, we're recording this. And the reason is we, we obviously have a few people who are not able to dial in and uh, we'll make the recording available to them. Or maybe if you'd like to review it for whatever reason later, um, we can do that. So we, we are recording. And um, um, just uh, one, one note, if I could, about um, typically we have the, uh, um, the antitrust statement that's read. And uh, Tiffany, we're not going to do it right now, but um, that is uh, something that we do before each and what, every one of our board meetings and our executive committee meetings. And what I might say to you, particularly you committee chairs, it would be a good practice for us to begin doing that even with the committee chair meetings. And um, we can get you a copy of that. We will send you a copy of that so you can use it uh, um, as you start your meetings. All right, let me get started with my area, if I could, uh, regarding uh, uh, some things I need to discuss with you. The first item on the agenda is the role of the staff. And um, as all of you know, I think most of you know, we have uh, three of us on full-time staff here in the NAFA Florida office. Um, I, of course, am your CEO and uh, oversee the day-to-day -day administration of the association. 
um, including budget, uh, staff issues, um, organizational efforts, and, and so on and so forth. Diana Shipley and our staff, she handles membership and she also oversees the website. Any, any corrections or changes to the website, Diana handles for us. Uh, regarding membership, many of you have already had uh, uh, encounters with Diana, uh, things that you need, whether it be lists, whether it be uh, resources. Um, Diana is extremely efficient uh, and will get you uh, those items that you need. I'll talk more about that later, but she oversees membership and our website. Ashley Jessup on our staff, um, she does an awesome job overseeing the administration of the sales of our study manuals, as you know. We have a contract with the Department of Financial Services uh, here in Tallahassee for the sale of the pre-licensing study manual for life and health agents. And uh, we also have a, a Spanish version of that. And we also sell the exam workbooks, which is an optional text, um, as are the flashcards. So all those items keep her quite busy. She handles individual orders, bulk orders, and we do have distributors around the state. Tiffany, you're one of those. We appreciate what you do there. And, um, and selling the manuals, the study manuals around the state. So that is a, um, essentially a six-year contract. We won it two years ago. So we have another year left on the first three-year section. I expect the uh, second three-year portion of that contract will be extended as well. And um, we will continue. And as you know, as you might imagine, it certainly does supplement our revenue uh, for the association, enables, uh, enables us to continue the services and benefits that we offer. Uh, Pat uh, uh, Willard, of course, is our bookkeeper here at NAFA, Florida. She handles all the check writing and uh, all of the finances, the finances that you receive in your emails each month prior to the board meetings. Uh, she puts all of those together and uh, she really does a great job with all that. And um, uh, she oversees and works with the auditor at Law Red, an independent, con an independent uh, uh, CPA firm here in town that she works with and that we work with to complete our audit or our review. Um, as you know, Tim Meenan is our lobbyist. Um, he's a contract lobbyist, that meaning that he has other accounts other than NAFA Florida. Um, what I would tell you about that, though, is that even though we are a uh, one of his uh, uh, clients, if for lack of a better word, um, he treats us like we're the only client he has. Um, he has a very, very deep personal uh, feeling for NAFA Florida, primarily because of his relationship with her Morgan years and years ago when, when Tim was a student in law school at FSU and Herb was working with him then. And um, uh, Tim just thought the world of Herb Morgan. And as such, um, Tim has never forgotten what Herb did for him. And uh, we're enjoying the fruits of that relationship today, if you will. And um, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I think, especially here as your CEO, that we need to continue. I cannot imagine another lobbyist uh, uh, working for us um, if, uh, if Tim wasn't there. So um, he does a fabulous job for us. You all know him, and I'm not going to go any further into that. But I thought you might like a little background into, um, into his relationship with us. All right, let me share my screen again with you. The next item here is the... Um, Chapter Playbook, can you all see it? The uh, Chapter Playbook is uh, probably one of our very first resources that we need to go to uh, as an association. NAFA has put this together. The uh, Chapter Playbook really contains about eight chapters here. Um, you can read the titles as well as I can. I'm just gonna select one here and just give you an idea of, of what's in here. And um, uh, it's, it's amazing what they have in here in terms of resources. Um, and it really is our go-to resource in terms of leaders of the association. Let me just select one here. Uh, Tiffany, I'm gonna uh, pick on you here a little bit. Let's click treasurer. But look at this, all this information in here for the treasurer, the duties and responsibilities, so on and so forth. And um, they have one for every one of the uh, let's look at membership. Scott, I've already sent you this. I know you're aware of it. Uh, but the vice president of membership uh, on our board of directors, again, just a whole host of, of responsibilities and duties and information really um, about what they need to do. This is located on the NAFA website. I've included the link for you in another document we'll look at a little bit later 
uh, where we have such things. Um, but it is an amazing uh, organization a resource that they have put together uh, for not just the state, but for the locals as well. Uh, let's click operating a chapter, for example. And I just want to put your eyeballs in this a little bit so you have an understanding of, of what's there. The chapter structure, for example, um, there you go, just kind of outlines it for you, mergers and dissolutions, so on and so forth, and uh, lots of helpful information. I use it periodically in here day to day, and uh, it's something that I absolutely uh, uh, think you need to be taking a look at as well in your new role, not just as a committee chair, but also as a, um, um, as a uh, uh, officer and uh, director on the board as well. All right, let me go to my next document here. Tom, that's a lot of files on your computer, man. I know it. 95% of them are related to everything I do every day too. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's take a look at um, our leadership notebook. Um, the leadership notebook is, um, is uh, a huge document, actually. And um, it is available for you, for you to review on our NAFA website. I've given you the information on that in the previous resources email earlier today. It does require a password, so we provide the link and the password for you there. Um, and I just want to put your eyeballs on what's located contained in that leadership notebook. Um, general information, history of the association, our bylaws. Um, by the way, the current bylaws I've not updated uh, yet uh, for 2022, but I'll take care of that soon. Um, there's our chapter agreement. The playbook uh, is there as well, the information for it. Uh, the annual calendar is there, board information, just a whole host of information for you. I do encourage you to go in and take a look at it. I don't expect you to read every single page, but certainly kind of peruse it, get a feel for what's in there. And I did pull some select documents out of that leadership uh, notebook for to review with you today um, to give you an idea. First of all, let me show you here, section three, finances and insurance. Uh, the budget is not there yet. We obviously have not approved a budget for 2022. I will be working on a draft budget here in the office during the month of October, and I need to get that to the executive committee at the end of this month, and the board will need to approve it uh, at our first meeting there in, uh, in November. So, um, uh, so that's to come. The financial operations policy is there, a reimbursement policy, so on and so forth. Uh, the membership information is there in section four, advocacy information, there's a whole lot of brochures. There's a whole lot of resources in there, um, not for you just as a board member necessarily, but also for the chapter chair, the, uh, uh, the committee chairs as well. Let me show you the calendar for 2022. We pick it up with October 2021. Shows all the uh, dates for our meetings. Uh, it shows all the dates for uh, the Zoom calls, the installation ceremony, award ceremony in December so on and so forth. So your, your calendar is here. Um, note that our February 2nd board of directors meeting has been canceled only because we will have met two days prior to that in person in Tallahassee. So be aware of that. We'll have a, we'll essentially be our February meeting on January 31st. Um, you've got all kinds of uh, meetings here in May. We've got the NAFA Congressional Conference. They have set a date. They have not set a date for that. We anticipate that being in person. And uh, of course, here in July, you can see that we have the uh, Financial Advisor Sales Symposium, uh, which will take place July 14 through 15. As I mentioned earlier, the Board of Directors will meet uh, on Wednesday the 13th there, uh, exact time and location uh, to be announced later. NAFA P, P plus P Conference will be held in Phoenix, Arizona in August, uh, August 17 through 19. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. September, of course, October, the normal meetings, so on and so forth. So there's your, there's your calendar. It's an overview. Again, it's in the leadership uh, notebook. Uh, it's also a, an attachment that I sent to you earlier today. And you can simply download, download that if you'd like to do that. Here's our 2022 NAFA Florida Board contact information. Also in your notebook, 
uh, and also attached, but please take a look at it to make sure that we have your correct contact information. Please send me any corrections or edits uh, in the next few days, if you don't mind. Um, I think we're pretty close on all this stuff, but again, please just take a look at it, make sure your information is correct. In addition to the board members, as you can see here, uh, we, have, um, we have the standing committees, the committee chairs, so on and so forth. Um, the only one that I'm really not sure about, but I left it in was legislative, Tim Holliday's committee. I've not had a chance to talk, <clears throat> excuse me, to Tim Holliday about his legislative committee. So I, I left the same group as we had last year and I'll do take a cap. If there are changes, I will make them and send you a brand new, um, a brand new uh, list of the uh, contacts. So you'll have it. And um, so again, take a look at that and, uh, and, and get those changes to me as you see fit. All right, the next is our NAFA Florida Antitrust Policy Statement. And this is a document that uh, essentially uh, asks you to be very aware of any uh, antitrust uh, conflicts, any issues that you have, uh, let you know that as a board member uh, here with the NAFA Florida Board, um, that you do have some responsibilities uh, in terms <clears throat> of legal matters and antitrust issues. I'm going to ask you to uh, download this one, sign it, and return it to me. If you're able to sign it electronically, feel free to do that. This is the NAFA Florida Board of Directors Commitment Form. Um, as a member of NAFA Florida's Board of Directors, I will perform my duties, so on and so forth, um, accept my personal responsibility to do the following. And um, if you don't mind downloading that one, please be sure and read these through. Make sure you understand what they say. I'm, I'm just not gonna read them to you here today. Um, and then sign this document and return this to me as well. And then we have our code of ethics, duty of care, uh, confident, confidentiality um, statements here. Please read through the code of ethics, sign that and date it and return it to me. The next one, the next document is our social media conduct uh, uh, policy by uh, the NAFA Florida board members. This is a more recent document. Those of you who are, have not been on the board before, um, this is a more recent document and, I, and full transparency. I'll give you an idea of how this came about. Uh, we actually had a member of the board of directors a couple of years ago who had, um, I guess the nicest way to put it would be extreme political views and was posting things on Facebook and their social media. And that person was known to be a board of director member for NAFA Florida. Um, and we are, we suspect that some Florida legislators may have seen um, his posts from a very extreme political nature and um, it became an issue and something that we needed to deal with. Um, folks, I, I think what I would say to you is that you need to remember that we are a political organization. Um, we, we lobby, we have an at full advocacy program with our political involvement, um, our political uh, uh, committee and that raises funds <coughs> to contribute to campaigns, so on and so forth. And it's really important that we recognize that even in our personal lives and our behavior in our personal lives. And I mean, I don't mean to be the thought police. I don't mean to be the whatever police at all. But I do think that as NAFA Florida board members, we have a, a responsibility to recognize that whatever our personal beliefs are, maybe they're just not appropriate in certain situations, particularly as they uh, deal in terms of being a NAFA Florida board member. And, um, you know, we just don't want uh, our legislators, our regulators at the Department of Financial Services, et cetera, et cetera, to get the impression that maybe we're something that we're not. And uh, this policy was drawn up two years ago. And if you don't mind taking a look at it, read through it and sign it and re return it to me, um, we'd very much appreciate that. And by the way, that was adopted a year ago, I guess on uh, October 7th, 2020. So that's what that's all about. If you have any questions about that, or if you have any questions about any of them, please let me know and uh, we'll have a discussion and I'll be glad to get you any answers you'd like. And, uh, but um, th these things are important and are of course important. Let me talk to you about our reimbursement policy here with the NAFA Florida board. All of you are eligible for reimbursement for certain expenses. And um, 
Uh, the elected state officers and board members are defined here. Uh, and then your standing committee chairs are defined here. And the reason I'm pointing this out to you is because there are different levels of, of reimbursement depending upon what your role is on the NAFA Florida board. Here are the guidelines here. Um, and um, again, I'm gonna ask you to read those through, understand that, uh, and, and give you some idea of what, uh, what we go through here to make the decisions for the reimbursement and, um, and take a look at that. Um, this is the reimbursement policy for the executive committee. As you can see here, it's in the upper right-hand corner of the executive committee. That's the president, president-elect, vice president, secretary, treasurer, national committee members, person, immediate past president, so on and so forth. And it outlines here for the executive committee what their reimbursements are uh, for certain meetings and so on and so forth. Um, what I will tell you in, in terms of a blanket statement is, is that for any any time we have a board meeting, a board of directors meeting as called by the president, uh, then those travel expenses are reimbursable to you regardless of your role on the board. Um, the only exception to that would be our political committee chair. And um, the political committee chair has a separate reimbursement policy only because they are reimbursed in part by the political committee for the work that they do. So there's, uh, there's that. This next section is for the directors. Those, those of you who are not on the executive committee, um, this is your reimbursement policy. Um, I think probably the biggest difference though between the two, the, uh, the executive committee, the P plus P reimbursement is $1,700 per person up to. And then with the directors, it's $1,300. Uh, we will need to see re, re, uh, receipts and a reimbursement form for those reimbursements. Pat will jump me if I don't uh, if I don't get those receipts to you if you don't get them in. She's uh, pretty pretty hard about that, and um, I don't blame her. That's what we pay her to do. And then um, here we got we have the standing committee chairs. Now most of you who are standing committee chairs are already on the board of directors, um, but this would include. Um, uh, the standing committee chairs who are, who are not board members. And the only one we really have for that is Lily. So Kelly, this one would apply to you, um, standing committee uh, chairs there as well. And here's for the IFA PAC chair that I mentioned before, the reimbursement policy. So um, please review that at your convenience, understand what the reimbursement schedule is, and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll stay on top of that for you as we move through. This is the reimbursement uh, form, again, included in the leadership notebook or in your attachment, I would suggest you download that, print it up or whatever you need to do um, so you can have an idea of what this form is and looks like. If you've lost it, you've misplaced it, just let me know. I keep it on my desktop, Jeff. It's one of those links on my desktop there um, uh, is the reimbursement uh, request form. I, and I can email it to you right away. The mileage rate this year is 56%. Uh, we adopt the IRS reimbursement rate for mileage. If you're traveling by car, 56 cents. Last year, it was 56 and a half cents. So it's come down a half a cent. And, uh, but we do need to complete, have you complete these, uh, these forms after each and every event or trip that you make on behalf of NAFA Florida. Um, it's pretty easy, as you can see, across to fill out. Um, ask you to scan that back, return it to me. And I'll okay it, send it over to Pat, and we'll get you reimbursed. Pat cuts checks twice a month on the, uh, on the last day of the month, 30th, 31st, and then again on the 15th of the following month. So um, whenever we receive your, your reimbursement form along with your receipts, as soon as I forward to Pat, she'll pay it in the upcoming uh, round of checks, uh, whenever that is. So if it's you know, 10 or 12 days out from the next round of checks, it might take us a couple of weeks to get it to you. If you don't receive it after, I would say three weeks, please, please, please let me know. Um, and we'll find out what, what happened to it. But uh, we're pretty good about getting your checks to you in terms of your reimbursements. So that's what that's uh, all about. Any questions about that, about the reimbursement or, or any of these items actually? Um, let me flip these around here. Tom, other than the, um, the mileage going down a half a cent, have any of the, the uh, amounts changed over the last couple of years, two or three years? Um, <clears throat> no, no, they really haven't. Our, our reimbursement policy, George, 
has been the same ever since I've been CEO here. And um, I, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's a pretty liberal uh, reimbursement policy. Um, and I'll tell you my personal beliefs about it. And, and that is, look, I'm the only paid guy on this phone call. Um, the rest of you are not. You, um, you are on your uh, volunteer time here. You're doing work for the association. And it's my opinion, the very least we can do is reimburse you for your travel expenses um, as you do the work of the association. And um, that's, that's always been my philosophy here. And the reason, the reason I guess I have that, that attitude about it is because I used to be on the board of directors you know, before I came on staff. Um, I was what they call a regional vice president back under the old structure. And, um, you know, it was really nice to have some of those expenses reimbursed, especially when I was a much younger agent, getting started with a family and kids and the wife was wanting to know how come I got to spend so much money going to a meeting and, well, I'm getting reimbursed. And, you know, when you're young, that's a lot of money, you know, to get to some of these meetings. Heck, even for some of us who are older, it's a lot of money, but, uh, you know, um, so that, that's kind of my philosophy on the reimbursement schedule. So any questions about that? Any other questions about that? Okay. Um, let me go through the chapter agreement here. Let me change screens again. All right, this is the uh, NAFA chapter agreement. Uh, a couple of years ago, of course, many of you are aware of the uh, NAFA 2020 reorganization that took place uh, with NAFA and our local and state chapters. It was a sweeping broad- Tom, are you, are you trying to share your uh, screen? Because you stopped. Yes, sorry. Thank you, Jeff. Got That's it why now. you pay me the big bucks and reimbursement dollars. Okay. <laughs> Well, my brain gets ahead of my fingers here sometimes, but um, yeah, it was a sweeping change. Uh, a few of you were not around, many of you were around when, when we went through that reorganization at NAFA, which essentially streamlined um, the, the locals and the state chapters and NAFA. And if I could boil it down to one point, uh, one of the biggest changes, the biggest change in my mind was the fact that we as a state chapter became a chapter of NAFA. Our local chapters became chapters of NAFA. You may recall that before NAFA 2020 was put into place, we were all very autonomous. Uh, we could determine what our own local dues would be. We could determine when we wanted to have our own meetings, so on and so forth, and we still can do that. But uh, the truth of the matter is, is that we, we do not control our own destiny anymore. And NAFA's philosophy is, look, we've got to do something. Uh, the, the association at the time was, was dropping in membership. Um, they were seeing uh, less efforts being put out in terms of membership recruitment. And um, there was a whole bevy of, of reasons why it needed to happen. And your NAFA Florida Board of Directors at that time in 2019 approved the NAFA 2020 initiative and it passed and it went through. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the overriding uh, change, I think, uh, and you can read the document here as well as I can, is that we are now a committee, I'm sorry, a chapter of NAFA. Some of you may recall the survey that was sent out to all of the local chapter execs and the state chapter execs uh, regarding uh, the status of your local chapters. And then they processed all that and sent back the capital act, or I'm sorry, the chapter action reports uh, that I've reported on in our board meetings and so on and so forth. Well, that's that's part of the, the change, part of the result. We now have to answer to and abide by um, what NAFA expects us to do in terms of governance, in terms of uh, programming, um, and in terms of um, how we conduct our affairs here at the state level. Now, we still have some autonomy, of course. We have our own board of directors, our own board of directors that oversees its own budget, uh, determines its goals, determines... Uh, its plan of actions, so on and so forth, our mission, et cetera, et cetera. So we still have some autonomy, but the governance link, the legal link is now uh, to NAFA. As a result, this chapter agreement was signed uh, by Shalit Stewart, who was president at the time in 2018. Uh, and we moved forward uh, with the, uh, the NAFA 2020 
And I include that document in the leadership notebook and in this attachment, because I think it's important for you as board members in 2022 to understand that relationship <clears throat> with NAFA and what that's all about. So um, um, again, I'm not gonna read through that, but um, I, I think I've communicated the essence of that anyway. All right, uh, Mr. Incoming President, if it's all right with you, I'm gonna call an audible here and I would like to go ahead and move into the committee um, goals and responsibilities if I could. And uh, I think that might save us a little time as well. And then we'll open it up. Okay. All right. Um, can you see this document, Committee's Goals and Resources? We can see it, Tom. All right. Let me just, just blow a little. It up. Let me blow it up a little bit for you. All right. Is that better? Yes. Okay, this is for uh, for the committees and um, uh, the committee chairs just wanted you to have uh, some information here regarding your goals and your resources as we move through uh, our orientation here. Um, we're going to ask each of the committee chairs to prepare your goals and your plans for this year. Um, determine what your goals are going to be for 2022. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, as most of you know, you've been through goal planning sessions before, two or three uh, good ones, maybe four um, would be ideal. Um, when you, so you need to put your goals together and we need a plan for achieving those goals. It's just not a matter of setting your goals, but also how do you plan to achieve those goals? What are you going to do? What steps are you going to take to achieve those goals? Um, we saw uh, President Royal's goals for NAFA Florida and he discussed those. And uh, what I would recommend is to have your committee try tying into those goals <coughs> so, that, um, so that we can all work together, row in the same direction in achieving the goals of the association as well as your own committee's goals. Select your committee, um, you'll need a committee. And let me stress that nobody, I don't think anybody in this association or in this office expects you to do all the work by yourself. And I, I don't care what committee you, you're chairing, uh, but you, you need a committee to help you do the work and, uh, and, and get the things done that you need to get done. So select your committee and uh, Diana will help you with all the contact information. Let us know who your committee is, who your committees are, and then uh, we'll send you the contact information so you can reach out and contact them uh, in a very, uh, very easy way. Um, she can handle email notices to your committee. She can set up Zoom calls for your committee um, whenever you want to meet with them, so on and so forth. All you have to do is contact Diana and uh, she'll do that. Um, we do keep a staff calendar, an association calendar here, as you might imagine. And every single meeting, every Zoom call, um, everything that's related to the administration of this association is on that calendar. And uh, we just want to make sure that you don't bump up uh, against another Zoom call. We only have one Zoom account, <coughs> excuse me, so we don't want to bump up against other calls that may be going on. So get with us with a date and time when you want to set up your meetings. Diana will be check the calendar. We're glad to get that going, send you the Zoom link, and we'll go from there. Also, please determine what resources you're going to need for your committee or even your task force, by the way. <coughs> excuse me again. <coughs> Whether it be lists, uh, for example, I know Maureen throughout the year has said, Tom, I need a list of all the membership chairs in, in each of our six local chapters, or I need a list of uh, all of the uh, Northwestern Mutual agents in South Florida, so on and so forth. And we can prepare all that for you. We can do those things for you. Um, the staff is here to assist you, not just the committee chairs, but the entire board of directors in your efforts and in your tasks in your roles on the, on the board or as committee chairs. So please keep that in mind. Unfortunately, we can't do the work for you. And I, I, it would not be a good model for us to do that anyway as staff. Um, there's been once or twice I've, I've tried doing the work of one or two of the committees only because I recognize things weren't getting done. 
and that didn't work out so well. Um, my, my responsibility here as your CEO is to you, um, the board of directors and to the members of this association. Um, if, if I'm really buttoned up with one committee or one task force, so on and so forth, um, doing all the work, um, it, it just doesn't work out well. It detracts, it distracts me from the other more, let's say major work that I need to do as your CEO. So um, you'll need to have some resources, whatever they may be, lists, or if you need promotions and communications, uh, whether you need social media help and getting the word out for your committee, uh, we're here to help you with that as well. Maybe you need graphics. Hey, Diana, can you put me together a half page pro piece for my committee? We're working on so-and-so and I really wanna get the word out with a nice colorful piece you can put together. Diana's awesome at it. She, she generates all the graphics we use for our meetings day on the hill and the symposium as well. Um, if you have budgetary requests, some of you may need uh, some funds next year for 2022 related to your committee or task force. Please let me know. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've got to put together the, uh, the budget during the month of October to get to the executive committee at the end of October. So I'll need, really I need all of your goals, your action plans, the list of your committee members and your budgetary needs by Friday, October 22nd, by Friday, October 22nd. Um, I'll meet with the executive committee on the 27th, the following Wednesday, <clears throat> so that's why I need that October 22nd date in case I need to make some last minute changes uh, before I go into that executive committee meeting. Um, for all the board members, um, please, uh, particularly our committee chairs, review your roles and duties as found in the NAFA chapter playbook. I've already reviewed that for you, but I wanted to include that in this document as well. Again, there's the link for you. Um, there is on-demand NAFA blueprint leadership video, and it's a great resource. It's a great tool. Unfortunately, it's only available for advocacy and our membership chairs. Uh, so if you're involved in advocacy, legislative chair, pick pack, <clears throat> or membership, Scott. Scott, I've already sent this to you as well, I think. I think I did. But at any rate, uh, click on there, that, uh, that hot link there, and it'll take you to the, uh, the video to help you, again, help you with your orientation as a leader through 2022. Uh, you want to participate in our ongoing Zoom meetings. I've created a master list of the monthly, sometimes quarterly meetings that NAFA and NAFA Florida have. I've listed the NAFA meetings first. Um, a through F are NAFA. Uh, there's a chapter leaders, leaders meeting the first Friday uh, at two o'clock of each month. Um, that meeting is awesome. I know some of you dial into that once in a while and some of you more frequently than that, uh, but they share a lot of updates and information about what's going on in NAFA, uh, issues, meetings, programs, so on and so forth. It is just chock full of information. And I encourage all of you who are serving on the board next year to dial into this call. Um, program chairs doesn't impact us so much here. It does impact our local chairs, uh, our local committees. Um, there's a chapter president's call, uh, George, that you'll need to be involved with. It's the third Friday every other month. Oddly enough, they won't let me on that one. Uh, that is just for uh, the, the chapter presidents. And uh, once uh, we send in the list of officers and our board members to NAFA, you will be put on that list. Each one of you will be put on the appropriate distribution list for emails regarding to each of these phone calls. So that'll, that'll be happening. There's one for the PAC, IFA PAC. It's a regional meeting. They meet quarterly, the third Wednesday at 10 a.m. Field staff, that's the execs. They, NAFA calls the field staff, all, everybody who's a chapter exec, state and local. Membership chairs on their Maureen. You've been diving into those meetings as well. Um, and then at NAFA Florida, NAFA Florida, as I mentioned earlier, we do have, we, uh, maybe you're not aware of it, but we do have a, a meeting of our local chapter execs. I meet with them every fourth Tuesday at 9 a.m. We meet for about an hour. And those are really awesome meetings. I really enjoy chatting and, and communicating with our local chapter execs. Um, you really get a feel for what's going on in some of our local chapters when you sit down and talk to those execs for an hour. The local presidents meet the third Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, and uh, George, you'll chair that meeting. I know you've been on the past year or so, uh, but beginning in January, you, you'll chair the local presidents meeting uh, again, um, uh, the third Thursday at four o'clock. The foundation meets the third Friday at, at 8.45 a.m. And of course the PAC chairs meet the fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Is that, you're gonna continue with that, Taylor? 
that uh, that meeting on the fourth Friday. Okay, very good. As of right now, yeah. Okay, good deal. Um, let me give let me refer you to someone here, Zach Levin. Many of you know Zach, or at least have heard his name. He's um, on NAFA staff. Um, he actually works out of his apartment here in Tallahassee, but he's on staff at NAFA. Zach is one of the most amazing guys I've ever met. If, if you have a question about what's going on at NAFA, about an issue, a program, whatever it may be, send that question to Zach, and that guy is the answer man. He'll find you the answer to it, and he gets back to you in a very, very timely way, too. Um, just a bright young man, and... Uh, just amazing in his his work ethic and and takes his role seriously in getting back to us with these questions. Um, um, is he available for hire? <laughs> I've thought the same thing. <laughs> well, you want it for my job? Is that what you're saying? No, not your job. I'm sure we can find him someplace. Okay. Yeah, um, he he does an outstanding job with that. <clears throat> and what I would suggest though, is, if you have a question or concern, give me a call here or send me an email or Diana, if it's membership related, so on and so forth. If we can't have an answer, we're going to Zach. That's who we go to anymore. I don't, I don't really worry anyone else up at NAFA. Um, Zach can get us the answers and he's very quick and very efficient about it. So um, anyway, that's a nice list of resources there for the committees. Um, and uh, so if you could make sure you circle your calendar for Friday, October 22nd, um, to get your goals, your action pl plans, your list of committee members, and budgetary requests back to me, then um, I think that uh, would just be awesome. We can get going, really, really get it rolling for um, 2022. Oh, uh, does anyone have any questions? I know I rolled through a lot. I kind of did it in a hurry. Um, I'm, I've got you in the back of my mind. I know you'd like to get off the call, so we're trying to get it through here. But uh, at any rate, uh, does anyone have any questions? No. Nope. All right, Mr. Incoming President, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, um, I mean, really, I would just wanted to have uh, an open discussion with any board members or people on the call today that had any questions, thoughts, comments, suggestions uh, moving forward. Can I ask a really stupid question? There are no such thing as stupid questions, Craig. You know that. What does the Governance Committee do? The government's committee helps set the board for the uh, next year for future leaders and board members of this organization. And, okay. and, and my second question would be, you know, we're now a couple of years removed from the 2020 initiative thing. For you guys are a little more involved. How's that been going? Well, they're uh, already drafting a 2025 plan. So what does that tell you? <laughs> Okay, then there we go. That's about what I was thinking. Craig, I, I think from an organizational standpoint, it has gone very well. Um, however, it does have some pitfalls to it. And one of the pitfalls that that I have seen, uh, I think is membership recruitment. Um, you know, we relied so heavily on our local chapters out there local associations when we had them uh, to 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 do the work in terms of membership recruitment. Because as you all know, membership, it's a personal sell. It's like selling life insurance. You don't, you know, people don't call you up on the phone and say, I want to buy some life insurance very often. Doesn't happen very often. It's, it's a When they do, it's usually too late. Right, exactly. I'm <laughs> pregnant, I need some health insurance. But, um, <clears throat> but I think that the reorganization, the AFA 22, Craig, I think did have some drawbacks. And I think actually membership recruitment is, is part of it. Now, I think what they were relying on and continue to rely on is to really boost those member benefits and enhancements uh, and services and so on and so forth. I think they were really, you know, really clinging to that, that that would help grow membership. Um, I think it has grown membership some, um, but that, that uh, you know, freighter out at sea takes a while to turn around out there. And I, I think it's very possible we're going to continue to see membership grow more and more as NAFA is able to get the word out um, on, on the new NAFA and the benefits that they have to offer. Yeah, 19 was my first year on the board. And that's when y'all were actually, I think my first state board meeting, y'all voted on that. I didn't feel like I had a say in it, but I seem to recall something about they wanted more money and they were going to give us a ton of support. And I don't know that I've noticed, I haven't personally noticed a ton of support from them, but Maybe I'm removed from that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a general comment um, in regards to that. So there's something like 40 local chapters throughout the entire country of which um, for this year, for 2021, six of them are in Florida. So Florida is unlike a lot of the other states in the association. Um, and, and that's not even including our two um, chapter affiliates with um, uh, North Sun Coast and Ocala. Um, most of the, of the states have one, maybe two locals, if they have any local chapters at all. So wow. we very much are the exception to the rule in that respect. And just as a reminder, we will we'll be down to five uh, chapters here in the state as of January 1st. Palm Beach is... Um, has elected, has voted uh, to do away with their chapter status and become an affiliate as of as of the first of January. Yeah, just right. I mean, we we we're we're the big we're the big dog on the block, really. At NAFA, um, we have, as you mentioned, six, then five local chapters. There are many states in the NAFA Federation that don't have any local chapters. You know, the state is the local. Um, and even in some cases, they only have 238 members in the whole state, you know, Alaska, you know, Alabama, a few of the smaller states in terms of population. So let me add something here, Tom, uh, uh, Craig, the, you know, the, I think the primary reason they went this direction was that they were having a very difficult time staffing locals, bringing up new presidents, you know, who wants to serve, who wants to do this. And furthermore, uh, people were getting a very different experience depending on what local they went to. You know, it may be very vibrant, very dynamic, great training programs, maybe a bunch of guys sitting around having coffee and, you know, and that was about it. So they were trying to unify the experience that everybody sees, you know, and, and, and take a lot of the training virtual, which of course turned out to time well with the pandemic anyway. Yeah. But, you know, the fact now that we can sit there and watch Broward's local you know, when I had Van Mueller on there the other day, I mean, I dialed in and, and watched Broward's local and, and you have the opportunity to, to see a lot more training opportunities of what we did when we had locals. And that's, that's the reason why they went there. And furthermore, if you looked at organizations across the country, associations across the country, you know, the ones that, that depended on locals were all shrinking. You know, they, right. they were all shrinking in membership and the ones that were growing were the ones that were centrally controlled. So that's kind of why they went there. Are they, are they lacking some in support? You know, what I'd like to see them do, I would like to see them have people on staff that call every lapsed member. You know, you, you take care of that part of it and let us worry about recruiting members. And, um, and so there's more I'd like to see them bring to the table, sure. So can I ask you, so like I see the stuff for like Broward's local log in and see that. Are they marketing that nationwide or just statewide? Statewide. Like that, the Broward thing was statewide. Well, NAFA has recently come out with a calendar, a nationwide calendar for all of that. And uh, that it's, they're not proactive with it. In other words, they're not going to send you the nationwide calendar as a rank and file member there in, in Apopka, Craig, okay? But there is a nationwide calendar available that anybody can go look at in the NAFA website. We as the chapter execs or our staffs have the opportunity to load things into that calendar of things that are going here in Florida. We have done that. We've, you know, we've loaded our stuff. And again, back to my meetings with the local execs once a month, I've encouraged them to go to that calendar make sure they load that stuff up. And look, just because you're in Broward or in Jacksonville doesn't mean you can't get uh, you know, members from Billings, Montana and Las Vegas and Dallas, Texas coming to your meetings and paying the 30 bucks for the CE or whatever. And that's your revenue, you know, so right. they seem pretty excited about it. I don't know actually how many of them are doing it. I could probably go to the calendar and look, but uh, I, I want to remember back, back, uh, I don't know, four years ago, uh, Tom, was it when at the congressional conference in DC, when they introduced this situation? I mean, there was uh, um, almost a mass mutiny. I mean, that was the first time in my NAFA experience that I had heard people from other states get up and be so passionate about this organization. Quite frankly, it's one of the reasons that I got passionate about it when I saw these other people doing this. And the reason I put in my talk today, the information about the associations and the chambers of commerce um, that are all struggling 
we're, we're not the only ones. It's all, it's across the board. As a matter of fact, you, you may know of some, but I don't know of any organizations that are growing by leaps and bounds. Um, and so while I criticized it to begin with, and Mark Tirolosi and I got involved in, in that, that whole program, and that's another reason why I'm sitting where I'm sitting today, um, I do think that they're doing everything they can to try to keep this thing going. So um, I, I think the, the resources and what they've generated to move forward with membership, they're, they're, uh, I'm not trying to discount membership because I started my whole day by saying that membership is so important. Okay, so none of us want to get off that track, but you have to commend them somewhat for what we've been able to maintain, especially through this pandemic. Yeah, and let, let me emphasize something that Craig Duncan said a moment ago too. Man, it's all about your leadership bench. That bench has got to be loaded with people ready to come up and move into those leadership slots. And as I mentioned, I think I did on our last board meeting, it may have been the executive committee, Folks, I'm going to tell you this what happened to Palm Beaches. We've, we've lost Palm Beaches as a local chapter because nobody wanted to step up and serve. Um, Scott Rosen is the president there, but he's got nobody behind him who's willing to step up and serve as president. And um, fortunately, fortunately, we don't have that problem here at NAFA, Florida. It could be a little better. We've, we've kind of had to go out and make a few phone calls. But the truth of the matter is we have gotten great leadership here at the state level. But the same cannot be say cannot be true cannot be said to be true at many of our local chapters at the local level, and um, membership is probably the number one priority. But the number two is providing people to serve in those local boards of directors with the idea of moving up the chairs to pre be president and lead those associations. Uh, after that, and, number and three. That's what, no, number that's three. What, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, George. Oh, no, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that the third most important thing on my mind. Um, that our chapters are being, is raising PAC dollars. Um, I've always believed that, you know, uh, you know we, we continue to lose members. By the way, the rate of loss of membership at the state level is diminishing. Have you noticed? Um, we've been hanging out around 1320, 1311, 1307 now for the past several months. So um, that ship seems to be turning a little bit. Hopefully it'll go the other direction soon. But the truth of the matter is it's PAC dollars. Your PAC dollars come from those who are most committed to the association and to the mission and to the work of this association. If your PAC dollars start diminishing, that tells me that membership decline is now beginning to impact our core members. And um, we've been kind of holding our own. I wish uh, Taylor was still on call, but we've been sort of holding our own with it, but it's starting to make me a little nervous about where those PAC dollars are going. So. Number one, membership. Number two, leadership development. And number three, PAC dollars. And, and I wanted to chime in when you talk about leadership development. Um, again, back to your original question, Craig, what is the advocacy? I mean, excuse me, what does the uh, um, committee do? Uh, governance. Yeah. governance committee. The governance committee. And, you know, Joe Challum ran the governance committee this year, did an incredible job, in my opinion. And that's one of the reasons why we put the uh, typically the, the past president and head of the of that committee because and that's what Craig's going to be doing next year. And I think they've done a great job doing that. And it's important because we have people lined up to take to co-chair some of these committees. And I know that Jeff Chernoff, one of his focuses is leadership development. And so, like Tom says, I think we've done a pretty good job with leadership development in this state. I think we've done a pretty good job at the Central Florida chapter, and I know Tampa does too. Um, don't know much about the Jacksonville chapter, but they seem to be. So, yeah, I mean, Tom said it best, membership, leadership development. I think I speak for Maureen when I say we don't want to be the ones to turn off the light of the party. And the only way that's going to happen is to identify top talent that are ready to step up after uh, Maureen and I are done serving. So, can, I, can I just say one thing before, um, since we're talking about membership? Um, this is actually two years now because I took over membership like four months before it was time to start. And so I'll tell you, I might be able to sleep at night a little bit more now. But can we just make the last few months of this year, knock the socks off of them and bring as many members as we can in. Just focus, focus, focus on that as a, as a you know, the end of the year special. Get them in and, and bring them in, please. Yeah, get in now because the rate's going up. 
<laughs> that's true. That's true. So on an interesting note for the diversity committee, you know, they've challenged the industries like the real estate industry and the insurance industry, like we need to increase diversity, right? So yesterday I found out that in real estate, if you're trying to take your real estate test and you tell them that you're Spanish, you get a much easier real estate test than you would if you didn't tell them you were Spanish. And so then you sit down and just say, translate to English and it translates the easier real estate test to English, I guess, as an effort to increase diversity. In case anyone was interested or wanted to know how to maybe, I don't know, do that in our industry. I don't know why we would. I don't know why you would want to encourage less educated people to participate in your industry, but that is something that's happening in real estate. Um, as, as a sitting member of DFS's uh, exam review committee for pre-licensing for life and health licenses. Um, I can tell you that that's not happening in our business, at least here in the state of Florida. Um, the questions that we, we review for that exam every July in a, in a dark room with a slide projector on for two days um, up on the screen, um, those questions have, have remained in difficulty. I have pushed for more difficult questions, and um, uh, we're trying to hold that uh, hold that level. And by the way, Greg Thomas, who heads up uh, the uh, education section for the department, is in concurrence with that. He used to be a Farm Bureau agent years ago, CLU, CHFC. He understands what we do every single day in the department there, so it's nice to have him on board. Yeah, I'm not saying I think it's a good idea, but... I was just letting you know. Yeah. Um, if, I can, if, if I can just add a very quick comment as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the reason why this, it is a task force this year is because we don't really know what DEI looks like as it relates to NAFA. We know what it looks like on a federation level, on a national level, but every state's a little bit different. And so we're trying to identify what it looks like for Florida. And that's why it's a task force um, that hopefully will turn into a standing committee for uh, future years. And, and just to be clear with that too, um, George has asked Jeff to oversee the creation of the task force. Um, and, and Jeff will find and select uh, some, some folks to be on that task force um, as we move forward. And um, I, I think we've got several good candidates out there to serve on that task force. Uh, and with the idea in mind that it will be a task force for the first year, and then we'll come to you next year at this time for a proposed bylaws change to make it a standing committee. We were too late for it this year. And incidentally, that's something else the government's committee does is they uh, take up bylaw changes. Right, right. It's, but it sounds like, Craig, you're volunteering to uh, be on the committee. I'm going um, to head the committee. I'm heading the that, committee. Or, or the task. I was voluntold. <laughs> he's, he's the chairman of the committee. Oh, no, I meant, I meant Craig Roderick for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, mm, okay. yeah, we can talk about that offline. Yeah. Um, and and just, who's hold? I don't think we hold anybody back from volunteering for a straight commission job. Come on, whoever you are, if you're willing to work, we got a desk and a phone. Come on, <laughs> it make any difference to me. I got, I'm completely open to that. Um, and not to jump back among topics here, but back to membership just for one second. Um, Scott Spicer, of course, has agreed to be our membership chair for this year. And George and I have already met with Scott. We had a three-way Zoom and uh, uh, to chat about 2022. And uh, Maureen, you'll be delighted to know that Scott, man, he's going to pick up that mantle that you're going to set down and he's going <laughs> to run with it. So um, both George and I came away very enthused with, with what we can expect out of Scott and the, and the membership committee. And as I told him, like I told the rest of you, you can't do it by yourself, man. You need it. You need a committee to help you, and we're going to help him put that committee together, so on and so forth. So we'll be standing by, Scott, to, to give you assistance with that. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate by that. By the way, David Tapia, thank you so much. 
he has already signed all his documents and sent them to me in an email. So that, <laughs> that's the standard. The rest Over of you have to Huh? Yeah. I'm just wondering what was he not listening to while doing all that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> I'm the king of multitasking is, is what it is. Um, I'm a <laughs> so, sounds like you need to move up the chairs, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about me this whole time, you know? They're, they're, <laughs> <you're waiting. laughs> Can I jump um, in here real quick? Absolutely. Everybody's, you guys will look great now. You got to smile. I was just uh, taking a page out of uh, Brian Holtz's pay, uh, book, if it's okay. Um, so maybe like on, if you guys can just keep your great smiling faces, I'm going to do a screen print and we can put this out on our Tampa, uh, mm -hmm. social media and whatnot. So I love it when Brian does that. So I'm going to take that here, I guess in about one, two, trying to look at the camera and do this. I don't know how Brian does it. Uh -huh. Oh, you guys look great. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That is a good one. Oh. All right. And Pat, we, we are so pleased that you're going to be the YAT chairman, but also, I think you should all, we should, I don't know if we have a committee that does it right now, but you need to be our new social media guy because uh, nobody does a better job with social media that I know of than you do. So uh, we can just kind of indirectly name you that. How about that? Yeah, that actually sounds good. That's, uh, I was coming up with my two or three uh, goals for Tom Ashley. I kind of had included that for yet, but obviously it's going to rising tide lifts all boats. So absolutely. Absolutely. That'd be fantastic. Well, Mr. President, I, I think that's about it. We, uh, to the rest of, to all of you, we've got uh, uh, a meeting Wednesday morning. I know I sent out conflicting emails today, you know, one for this and one for that, but uh, Wednesday morning, Mr. Duncan will have our current board of directors meeting at 9 a.m. Well, thank you so much for everybody for joining and uh, we'll see you again on Wednesday. Fine job you did there, George. <laughs> thank you, folks. Take care.